Let's get to the point. Thanks for joining us on To The Point. I'm Becca Haviger in for Alex, who's out representing ABC 10 at the Sacramento Black Chamber of Commerce Celebration of Excellence Gala, emceed by our own Chris Thomas, which we'll get to later. But first, we want to bring you our final part of our mega flood series. Climate change has doubled the risk of devastating floods in California. Our meteorologists have spent months asking our state lead researchers, what is a mega flood? What damage could it do? And are we ready as a state? Tonight, Carly Gomez closes our series with a look at the importance of flood insurance and what you need to know to stay protected if the worst case scenario comes true. All of our tools were took March on the water. It looks like a bomb went off there. Imagine the biggest storm you've ever been through. He had to chainsaw his way out his front door. Cold, hard rain has local creeks and rivers running high. All this came underneath the doors. What if the rain didn't stop? A levee breaks. Now your neighborhood is taking on water. In Sacramento region alone, there's over 514,000 people that are protected by these levees. Studies suggest that Sacramento is actually one of the top 10 in the nation most at risk for flooding due to rivers. The most intense atmospheric river storms are likely to become significantly more intense. And certainly the spillway incident was one of those instances where we did not have time. So are we prepared? This is Mega Flood. One of the things that we say at FEMA is that all droughts are followed by floods. Frank Manzel with FEMA Public Affairs says they prepare for catastrophic events like floods and try to get the word out to residents on how to prepare. Even with warnings, residents find themselves left wondering what to do. I don't know how many disasters I've been at where people had no idea what insurance policies they had, bank account numbers, all that stuff that you take for granted as having, you will likely have it destroyed in a disaster. So this begs the question, are we really prepared? Manzel works closely with experts with the National Flood Insurance Program. He says many people think they're covered with home insurance and find out the hard way. Flooding can happen anywhere it rains. As I said, you can get street flooding. Levees are constantly under pressure. There's always water flowing past them, eroding at the base of the levee. And levees do overtop. And it's a nice system, but it's not foolproof and it doesn't offer 100% protection. According to FEMA, over 90% of flood insurance policies are covered by the NFIP. You can buy flood insurance through your current insurance company who participates in a write your own policy. The NFIP allows your insurance company to write and service government flood insurance using their own brand name. Premiums are assessed through flood maps. After a community gets its flood maps, it also comes with a set of building standards for that community. And we assume that you as a homeowner building after the flood maps are out are gonna to build to that new standard. You paid what were called actuarial rates. Those are rates that really reflect the risk. The National Flood Insurance Program has paid $72 billion in claims to about 2 million policyholders. That's according to a statement by David Marstad, Senior Executive of the National Flood Insurance Program to the Committee on Banking, Housing and Urban Affairs last year. The largest KV is that FEMA will not duplicate benefits. So if, if my home is damaged significantly uh, from a flood, for instance, FEMA will pay you for everything your flood insurance doesn't cover, up to a total of about $35,000 to $40,000. Private flood insurance is beginning to gain ground in sales as more tools and forecast for flood zones becomes available. Often, private insurance can cost a bit more, but can cover higher value homes. Private flood insurance, they're usually higher, but not necessarily so. You can shop around and, and compare prices. You can also use private insurance to augment your national flood insurance program. So if you thought your structure was worth more than $250,000, you may want to look at a private insurer to cover the balance. The biggest misconception about flood insurance in California is that you don't need it. Sacramento is at the confluence of two rivers. Some studies suggest that Sacramento is actually one of the top 10 in the nation uh, most at risk for flooding uh, due to rivers. Flood maps around Sacramento metro area shows the regions near rivers, lakes, dams, levees, and canals 
are definitely at risk. Take Natomas, Pocket, and South Sacramento, surrounded by major water sources, but it doesn't mean outlying areas are safe. 40% of our flood claims that we pay are for structures that are not in a flood zone. John Kane with the State Water Resources Control Board continues to advocate for public education when it comes to our water channels. Make sure you get flood insurance, even if you're protected by a levy, because that levy could fail. And having a community, not just a few homeowners, but the whole community of people to have flood insurance really helps the community build back from from floods. Those emergency to go bags constantly mentioned in earthquake scenarios can also be used in floods. Having a kit that's fully inclusive of everything that may, they may need, including personal medications, uh, pet supplies, things like that, that can accommodate everybody within their family. Levees and drainage canals like this one can be inundated with water in a mega flood. You and your family will need to be ready to evacuate in a moment's notice. There's also some extra things you may need for that emergency kit. That includes non-perishable food for at least three days, including water. You're also going to need maybe a first aid kit for yourself, but also some important factors that add on to this list, aside from those emergency kits you already have for earthquake help, is possibly a whistle in case of an emergency. You also want to waterproof some of those documents in plastic bags or containers. Another extra step, making sure you have extra clothing from areas that are inundated with water. You want to have those extra blankets, clothing, anything protective to wear. And another one on that list includes some cash on hand in case of emergency situations with power outages. Apply to the megastorm as much as it would apply to an earthquake or a wildfire. Have an escape plan and a place to meet. Now it's a race against time for our infrastructure to meet the rate of climate change due to our warming planet. Being prepared is our best chance at protecting our communities. And our Carly Gomez joins us now. Carly, thank you for this story. Yeah. You know, flood insurance, that's going to come at a price. How much are we talking? Yeah, it really varies. So in California, the National Flood Insurance Program averages Californian homes at around $850 a month. But that's the average. That's about $70 a month. But when you think of some of the higher end places around the Bay Area, even San Rafael is looking at about $1,800 a month. But areas like Elk Grove, it's about $450 a month. So it varies depending on your flood map, flood zone area. So that's really the biggest issue here is where do you lie in according to levees, lakes, and rivers. And that's per month or per year? That is for the year. Okay. So if it's averaging 850, that's 70 bucks a month. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Now I know having covered uh, stories in in the you know the foothills, mm -hmm. a lot of folks find that their fire insurance gets dropped suddenly, mm -hmm. and that can get very expensive. Is there something similar with flood insurance? Right. So the flood insurance program has been around much longer than fire situations that we've been in. Think about hurricanes that happen, things on the East Coast where they're dealing with nonstop hurricane season. That flood insurance program has been established. Fire, not so much. Mm -hmm. But the flood insurance program does have its cap and its limits. So you can get only about $250,000 for your building property and only about $100,000 for your personal property. So you're looking at $350,000. Think mm -hmm. about how much the homes here cost. Yeah, I, mean, I feel like $250,000 is not going to even... Yeah scratch the surface on a lot of California homes. Right, and so private insurance is an option, and that's something that people could consider mm -hmm. kind of picking up the remainder of the tab. Sure. Uh, final quick question here for you. What questions should homeowners be asking when they're looking at flood insurance? Yeah, you know, this is an ever-evolving situation. Technology has been coming out, kind of improving the flood map zone, so kind of getting more into the micro uh, areas that could see it more um, or worse or better. So it's really pinpointing, am I in that flood zone area? How... Uh, much of risk am I taking being in this area and can I cover the amount that would be needed? A lot for homeowners to think about important information. Thank you so much, Carly. And you can catch all four parts of our Mega Flood series on abc10.com slash Mega Flood.